the vehicle, it was a Navy SEAL. He commandeered this vehicle when he was out in country. A couple of air rounds through the floor seem to be the, the go-to. So let's cut some footage of it in action. Welcome back to another vlog. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be sharing this Humvee with you today. It's a vehicle that has a colored past. The owner of the vehicle was a Navy SEAL. He commandeered this vehicle when he was out in country. Um, they took it from a local Marine group. They've outfitted it to serve the needs of that team. And he went on and um, performed a few different missions that we're not going to get into. When coming back stateside, he found the same unit he was in. So now he's got that history with this vehicle. He's now taking it and giving it the respect and a refurbishing. Uh, it showed up with bullet holes in the block. It showed up with bullet holes throughout. Uh, we went ahead and the guys swapped out that 6.2 with another 6.2 that they refurbished. He did retain the 24 volt system because of the area where he's relocating to uh, and uh, wants to keep it more of that original that it was gone through many phases with us from the initial outfitting of the bumper and some of the airlift hooks and accessorizing to then going full swing more recently to get this coating this is a model of, of paint that is on his triumph bonneville 1977 triumph so it's like a, almost like a british racing green color very cool color i'm not sure if you see it in the on the imagery there the texture does change the color slightly darkens it up but it has a nice metallic to it we use the regular paint, non-texture, on the dash. So you can really get an idea of the depth of the color in, the, in this, this coating itself. So before we peel back the layers on this build and explaining the different facets and, and upgrades that he's doing, let's cut some footage of it in action. All right, I hope you enjoyed us sharing some of that content with you of Humvee in action. I want to give you a quick walk around on the exterior, some of the accessories that we put on this truck, and then we'll get into the interior, finalizing with some of the cool, cool features that he's got planned for that engine bay and the original engine that's in there. The exterior, again, talked about it in the paint. We trimmed that off or accessorized that paint with our powder coat kit. All parts, all bolt-on parts are gonna be stripped down, powder coated, and then mounted with our stainless steel hardware. I think it just gives it that little bit of detail, it let, uh, gives it a little bit of pop, almost enhances the green with that contrast with the black and then that stainless steel hardware. We refreshed all the lights with new lenses, powder coat treatment on the, the framework there. Still haven't got the turn signals in there, but those are gonna go in. Probably gonna get a front face camera in here also. Um, but he did retain a hydraulic winch. Again, this is a very utilitarian vehicle. He's gonna change this thing from a life-saving platform to his scuba diving um, adventure vehicle. As you see on a lot of our builds, we change out the grill in the front to match the grill that's in the hood scoop. That stainless steel, again, follows that same motif with that trim or that accent that we get out of the stainless hardware. Really like the way that looks, freshes it up. Still has the halogen lights in here. I'm gonna twist his arm, try and get some LEDs in there. But um, it's, again, we're, we're not done yet. We're nowhere near being done. The airlift hooks have been added. 
the airlift hook gasket, the offset snorkel, and our front light bar are all things that wrap up this front end. I think it just looks great. That green looks awesome. Still looks the part, keeping that same motif for the kind of military style look to it, uh, but just a, a brilliant truck. I'm gonna walk down the side now, and you'll see that we have a Humvee with some civilian doors. These are actually unique because these are one of the first gen manual windows. So that's pretty cool. Managed to find some of these, uh, get away from the soft doors that were on there. Uh, we are gonna still retain that Humvee soft top uh, and get a fresh one on there and a nice black finish. So that's pretty cool. Very cool treatment. I wish I could find some of these doors for, my, for myself. There are manufacturers out there that are doing reproduction or replica doors, but there's nothing like getting that AM General factory fit and finish and function that these are. Our slant back tire carrier trims out the back. Uh, he's gonna probably do some accessories here for a scuba rack, something that's gonna be clamp-on style. So he has, the, again, a utilitarian function out of this vehicle. We've seen other variations in the vlog, the copper truck with a slightly canted mount for the tire. We did do a bolt-on uh, modification to this. These mounts here are actually for that 53-inch high-lift jack. These same style pipe clamps are gonna be used for other functions uh, as he gets it outfitted, as he starts personalizing it when he takes delivery of this vehicle. You might see this on the cover truck. We're doing it on most of our texture trucks. The black coating on the bed and over the fender rails there. So the different finish that we use or choose for the bed, a little bit thicker. I think it has a nicer look to it. It actually has a little more of a sheen to it, but I just like having that two-tone or the two textures in here may be a little bit more resilient to, to use. That's why we choose it in the bed. And we do that truck coat, which is almost like a little finer grit um, for, the, for the texture finish. In the bringing up the rear of the vehicle, we have our Viper rear bumper. This has a 24 volt winch in there from Warren. Uh, again, we've touched on the Viper bumper before, but on the Humvee platform, this is instrumental in having this option here with these lights, because we're gonna wire those in to the reverse light, because we have changed the shifter on this vehicle to have that reverse function. Uh, very key, all or most Humvees are coming with the three-speed shifter that does not have park, does not have reverse light set scenario. All of our paint jobs get the new taillight housing, and again, you'll see throughout this build that stainless steel that we talked about. So now that we're inside the Humvee, you can start to see some of the improvements and, and upgrades we're doing. The Momo steering wheel is one that is a tried and true upgrade from the factory, either H1 or Humvee steering wheel. We don't have the gauges in here, but we're gonna get some gauge set in there, retaining the 24 volt. So we're kind of limited on options, but we're gonna get a set of gauges in there. You do see on the dash, the paint I mentioned earlier, in the non-texture finish with that British Racing Green or HGZ Green color code that it was. Uh, a really nice color, has a little bit of metallic to it. It's got a real cool, real cool finish to it. We did source a set of H1 seats for this vehicle. Uh, it's gonna be an improvement. The original Humvee seats are, are very lackluster. I personally took out this, this support bar on my Humvee because of my size. I wanna be able to move the seat back. I retained some of the side impact or structure by using a factory set of H1 rocker panel protection. Uh, this was done away with kind of redundancy on the H1 model from 95 and, and, and newer. Uh, so that's something you can do because these things are really tight. You know, hats off to all you, all, all the, the military that, that served in these vehicles. Uh, thank you for your service. It's tight in here. I don't know how you guys managed with all the gear on. What we did on the floor of this is a product that we're going to start advertising and offering for the Humvee owner. Most of them, mine had it, this one had a good few of them. They had some reliefs in the floor. For, for drainage or just for keeping it clean or whatever it was. A couple of AR rounds through the floor seemed to be the, the go-to. So we went ahead and designed a product. It's a quarter inch sheet aluminum that's form fit and cut to the floor itself. This gives you that nice solid footing for the, the, the base of your vehicle. 
from factory. These don't have a rocker panel protection, so this floor is wafer thin. So we'll get more updates of this how, as it evolves and as we start putting the panels in, we get the seats in there, we'll be able to show you that our option for the seat bases in the rear, upgrading from that really thin metal that comes from factory. But let's get out and get open this hood and, uh, and see what's going on. We got some cool options and upgrades that we're doing there. Now that we have the hood open, we can really see that 6.2 tucked away in the hole there. Far cry from what you've been used to seeing with that Duramax swap. But this engine really is tried and true. It's almost like it doesn't make enough power to hurt itself. So it just goes and goes and goes. We've got a few upgrades planned for this vehicle. One of them being a full CTIS system. We are gonna change out the spindles for that CTS equipped style. We are going with the ARB 24 volt compressor. We, are, we have made a box that's gonna mount it here and conceal it. So you'll see that in the upcoming episodes as that gets pieced together. All the hosing and all the electrical is gonna go through this cutaway here and be plumbed in to the manifold with the, the switch inside to, to control that inflate deflate um, for his beach application, getting out there, doing that scuba. I'm really excited to put this kit on here. The CTS with the Humvee is gonna be a, an excellent option. Uh, it's gonna be very, again, utilitarian. It's everything on this vehicle is purpose built. He went ahead and, and sourced a dual volt alternator. We're gonna retain that 24 volt system for the 6.2 and all the lights and, and, and gauges and even the air compressors will be on that separate system. But from the 12 volt side of that, we're gonna go ahead and set up the battery tray that you have now on the H1 from 95, 94 and newer, or sorry, 95 and newer, where it's in the engine bay. So he's gonna have a 12 volt system there for all his uh, aftermarket, his add-ons, uh, any of the systems that he wants to source for this vehicle in that 12 volt variant. That's gonna be pretty cool. Having the best of both worlds, can't beat that. Thanks for watching guys. Really do appreciate all the views and the comments. Please keep them flooding in. I love to read those. Love to see the, the, the feedback from you guys. They do not go unnoticed. I personally am very proud to be a part of this process. I really have respect for this particular platform and it's time spent. Not only and not to mention and not to shortchange the owner, what he did, the years he dedicated to the country so I can enjoy it where I am now. So thank you, sir. Please stay tuned for the upcoming episodes where we'll be highlighting this as we make those stage changes and the upgrades, getting those seats in, getting the gauges in, like I mentioned. Again, thank you for watching. Subscription button, notification button. Is that like a heat lamp? <laughs> I'm not growing anymore. I don't need a damn grow lamp on me. <laughs> I just said I'm a shiny and now I'm definitely <laughs> shiny for nothing. Do you like the scuba? <laughs> oh, Remember that one show? Do you scuba? You ever seen that movie? Fucking retard! You got one fucking job, Jason. Yeah. One job. And what's one. that? One. Figure out how to work that goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs>